Hello, welcome back. We're continuing on with our NPV method. The crows are still with me. They even scared away that duck that's been living here last three weeks. Anyways, all right, NPV. So let's say that a company is considering investing in a new piece of equipment. The cost of that new piece of equipment is $130,000. It's going to generate, generate annual cash flows, annual net cash flows, net cash flows of $24,000. Management requires a rate, management rate of return. And this rate of return goes by many different names. So you might hear the book call it required rate of return you might hear the term hurdle rate okay so any of those work so management's rate of return is we will say 12 percent one more piece of information we need assets life is 10 years and we are going to assume if it doesn't even if it doesn't say that it is going to generate this asset will generate these annual cash flows for every year of its life so unless it says the asset will only generate cash flows for the first five years right but if it doesn't say that you assume it's going to generate that every year of its life okay so this is um, data similar to what you'd be given in a homework problem or quiz problem and now solve for the assets net present value and you're like oh great where do i start <laughs> she gave me a flow chart but that doesn't help all right so the present value of net cash flow. So we need to figure this out first. So let me give you the formula to figure out the present value of your net cash flows. Solve for NPV. So I like to do, uh, this is easy, okay. So net cash flow. Years. I'm gonna put years here. Um, I don't really need to because this is even cash flows. What's important for you to identify if it's even cash flows or uneven cash flows. This is even cash flows. Why? Because we're not told that in year one it generates twenty-four thousand, in year two it generates twenty thousand, right? They give us one amount for each annual uh, cash flow proceeds, right? Done. So it's even cash flows. So for years one through ten, our net cash flow is going to be twenty-four thousand dollars we're gonna multiply that by a present value factor do you guys remember your present value factors from 1a when we were doing bonds you guys loved bonds you loved them so we're searching for a present value factor okay present value factor there's a few things that you need to um, uh, determine in order to figure out this factor one, identify the table that we're going to use. Which table are we going to use? What is the interest rate, the I? What is the number of periods, the N? Okay, so those are three things we have to figure out. All right, so the reason we identified if it was even or uneven cash flows, if it's even cash flows, we are going to use a table called annuity, present value of an annuity table. This is, I believe, figure uh, B2 in appendix, appendix D of your book. Okay, let me check now and see if that's true. You can listen to the music provided by these crows. They're like right outside my window just staring at me <laughs> and, and cawing. It's very intimidating. Oh, criminy. All right, so Appendix D of your book. Here it is. Remember those lovely things? All right. So, present value of an annuity. All right, we have N here is the number of periods, I is your rate. So, if we go back to our work here, 
i is going to be management's required rate of return which in this example is 12 and is going to be the life of the asset okay once we have that where they intersect is your present value factor so 12 and 10 i get 5.650 5.650. Okay, good. Multiply across. This gives us present value of cash flows, net cash flows, net cash flows, which is what we were trying to solve because it's the first step on our little flow chart. Okay, multiply that across. One thirty-five six hundred. Okay, got it. So that's your present value. We're trying to get to net present value. How do we get to net present value? We need to subtract our capital investment amount. So take this, sorry about that, subtract your investment cost. Your investment cost is 130. Oh my gosh, it's silent. Did they finally leave? It's been like 40 minutes of that. Okay, this is our net present value. So that's our calculation there and we're not done. We have to make our recommendation if management should accept this capital proposal or reject it. Okay, we said our decision criteria was, or baseline criteria, if it's zero or greater, they should accept. You can see we have an amount well over zero, it's 5,600. So we recommend that management accepts or purchases this capital asset. Okay, so solve for NPV, this is our NPV, so you could stop there. If the problem then says, what do you recommend? Does, should management buy this asset? We would say yes, because it's a positive NPV meaning that management's rate of return of 12% has been exceeded. If it was exactly a 12% return, this would be zero. Okay, so it's well exceeded it. The limitation with the MPV, if we wanted to talk about a disadvantage of this method. So obviously we know an advantage is it uh, finally considers time value of money, considers time value of money. So that's a big advantage. A disadvantage is it doesn't pinpoint does not um, pinpoint the asset's rate of return, the asset's rate of return. For example, I can tell you it exceeds management's 12% required rate of return, and you're like, great, does that mean it's 12.5% return? Is it 13%? Is it 20%? And you're like, oh, I can't really tell you that. I can just tell you that it's over 12%. So that's kind of a limitation but that limitation is addressed in the fourth capital asset formula that we see, um, the internal rate of return. So we'll see that video tomorrow. Right now we're focusing on MPV. Okay, so we figured out how to calculate it. Notice this calculation was only for even cash flows. What happens if it's uneven? We will see that in the next video, and I'll go ahead and um, pull Mr. DeVille's data. So I've posted a new uh, Mr. DeVille continuing problem uh, where we will calculate MPV for his bookbinding machine and his industrial printer. So go ahead and download that new exercise that I've posted, and we will work through the bookbinder, which I believe is the one that has uneven cash flows. So let's go ahead and try that.